welcome, a warm welcome to our council meeting to those members of the public who are in attendance. I will now invite my chaplain, the Reverend David Chester, to say prayers. Just a moment of stillness before we uh, pray together. We pray for the borough of Wirral, for all who live here, for the work of the mayor and the councillors of this borough, for all who bear responsibility for the ordering of our common life, for those who work with and for our children and young people in education and recreation, for a vision of community which inspires our labours, and for the use of our gifts in the service of God's people. We pray for all in need and those who care for them, for refugees and those without shelter or work, for the sick, the lonely and the despairing, the aged and the distressed, for all who suffer through violence, warfare, crime, exportation or neglect. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, has shown us that the secret of happiness is a heart set free from selfish desires. Help us to look not only on our own care, but also on the needs of others, and inspire us in, in us such fair dealing and fellow feeling, as we may show our common citizenship in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. Please be seated. <clears throat> the first item of business is declarations of interest. Councillors, you are asked to consider whether you have any disclosable pecuniary and or any other relevant interest in connection with any matters to be determined at this meeting, and, if so, to declare it and state the nature of such interest. May I remind you that you should state the item number and title and the nature of the interest in question. Councillor Paul Hayes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I declare an interest in notice of motion number four, support for national action to tackle obesity given the nature of my employment. Thank you. Councillor Brightman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I declare a purchase of interest in agenda item 10, motion motion number 5, um, campaign for a people's vote owing to my employment. I'll be leaving the room. Thank you. Thank you. Item 2 is Mayor's annou announcement. Thank you, Paul. Councillor Stuart Whitting Whittingham. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a uh, personal interest in agenda item 3, by virtue of my employment. Thank you. So I now move on to item two, Mayor's announcements. I have been notified of the following apologies. Councillors Tony Cox, Sam Frost, and Tony Norbury. Are there any further apologies? Yes. Liz, Liz Gray, thank you. Under item two, I have the following announcements to make. This meeting is being webcast, but is, it is still going through a process of implementation. With regard to electronic voting, until we have received a demonstration, it is not in operation this evening. Now, uh, the green and red lights, they were not in action earlier today, but they are now in action, though they're not functioning properly. I understand, I understand that when you come to the end of your allotted, a minute before the end of your allotted time, the green light will go on. But when I press the button for the red light after your time has expired, the green light will also remain on. So you'll have red and green. When you see red and green, stop speaking. Thank you. Uh, in connection with notice of motion six under agenda item 10, Steve Baker, executive head teacher at Kilgarth School, has been invited to address the council on the subject of remembering Srebrenica. We should not detain Mr Baker for too long this evening, and I will invite him to make his presentation following public questions at item 5. Now, my, my own announcements, um, the Mayoress and I, well, we've been in the job for seven weeks. We've completed 77 engagements, including seven in robes. Just some highlights um, from us personally, the Tranmere Rovers reception at Birkenhead Town Hall, celebrating their... Uh, promotion back to the Football League, a wonderful evening in front of the crowd in Hamilton Square. The Tall Ships Weekend, uh, where we were invited onto a, 
one of Her Majesty's ships of the pier head, hosted the captain's dinner here in the city hall, the town hall, um, had the opportunity to actually sail on the tall ship in the Mersey on the Saturday afternoon, and then we were joined by most of you on the balcony at uh, the Floral Pavilion on the Monday and watched them sail away. Wonderful weekend. Uh, other highlights, um, yes, our civic service last a week, Sunday before last at St. Bridget's Church in West Kirby, where the, the choir at Birkenhead School put on the most wonderful performance for us and uh, really made it a marvellous service. And thank you to my chaplain, David Chester, for arranging the detail. Great job. Right. Um, so, uh, one further item, the Wirral Coastal Walk, which some of you may know that the Mayoress took part. Um, and accompanied by Councillor Ian Lewis and one of our neighbours, uh, completed 15 miles and was also accompanied by Councillor Sherry Povel and former Councillor Sheila Clark for part of the distance. And I'm pleased to say that they raised more than £800 for the Mayor's Special Charity <laughs> Now, um, amongst the many duties of the mayor is two uh, pleasant duties, is to um, accompany visits from various organisations and particularly schools and youth groups around the town hall. And a couple of weeks ago, I was conducting one of those for some Chinese visitors uh, when I had a message from the attendants that um, some pupils from Riverside Primary School uh, were in the foyer and wanted to pass over a letter to the mayor. So I went downstairs and I found um, that Councillor Anita Leach was already down there speaking to them. She just happened to be passing through the town hall that, that morning. And they duly read their letter to her, showed us the work they've been doing in connection with the schools of sanctuary. Um, this is an initiative to get young people to um, make a welcoming environment for refugees and asylum, asylum seekers, both at their schools and in the community. And in fact, our latest engagement this afternoon uh, at Birkenhead Town Hall was to issue certificates to seven of our rural schools who had all been carrying out this process. So I thought it might be appropriate um, to ask Riverside Primary to come here uh, this evening to tell us what they've been doing and to give us a little bit of appropriate entertainment.
These bracelets, these bracelets are for you to remind you of plight and sound to give them back to you. statement to the council and I have agreed that he can. So, Councillor Warren Ward, the floor is yours. Um, thank you Mr Mayor and firstly massive congratulations to you guys, that was amazing. Uh, great voices, I can't promise to say I share the same talents and I won't start singing uh, this evening. Um, Mr Mayor, thank you for the opportunity to address the council this evening. I have the honour and privilege to serve this borough over the past two years, and it is with great regret that I announce that this evening's full council will be my last duty as an elected member in this chamber, and I promise to Boris Johnson and to David Davis that I'm not trying to steal their thunder, it's a matter of coincidence. 
I've always been a believer in dedicating 100% of time and effort into everything that I do. It is this reason why I've taken the decision to resign. I have a new role at the Chamber of Commerce, supporting the local economy and supporting the creation of more enterprises here in Wirral. This is an important and demanding role which requires my full attention. Mr Mayor, I was elected to this council aged 18, the youngest elected councillor in this borough's history and one of the youngest in the country. I knew that being a young councillor was always going to be difficult with many hurdles along the road. But I hope that I've been able to inspire other young people to get involved in local politics, to make a difference and to change their communities. Though I am leaving politics for now, I will remain active in the local community and in particular I will remain in post as chairperson of the New Ferry Town Team. I am absolutely passionate about supporting the New Ferry community. It's my hometown and I am proud of what we've been able to achieve together over the past two years. Nobody could ever have imagined that the community will be at the centre of a major explosion. We still continue to carry on the fight for funding and recognition. New Ferry in Port Sunlight genuinely has an exciting future and I look forward to leading its growth and reincarnation, not as a politician, but as a young lad who cares deeply about his town's future. My final words in this chamber have to be to thank all of our dedicated officers, the people of Bromber, Port Sunlight and New Ferry, and to all of our elected members. But most importantly, I want to thank my partner Stephen McCulloch, who's in the public gallery, and Dean Clare, my parents, and my family. It is those closest to us who make the biggest sacrifices for our public service. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ward. Councillor Phil Davis. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor, for allowing me to uh, uh, speak. I, I just want to uh, just say a few words of thanks, really, to, to Warren for his service to the borough and to the people of Bromber New Ferry over the last two years. Um, I think, Warren, you have been an example of uh, an effective local ward member. I, I want to pay tribute particularly to you and, and the other two ward councillors, uh, I think, as well, in the, in the aftermath of the terrible um, explosion in, in, in New Ferry um, uh, you know, uh, over a year ago and the fantastic way that, that you, um, I think, uh, helped the businesses, the residents who lost everything um, in, in that community and we continue the, the, uh, the fight to, to get more resources for that town but I think tonight is about saying thank you to you and wish you all the very best uh, for whatever you do in, in the future. So certainly from my group, I, I hope I can speak for the whole chamber to, to thank you very much for your for your service over the last two years. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Ian Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, can I echo the sentiments of the leader of the council? Um, we all know that councils come and go, but I never expected to see one board leave before me. Uh, it is, uh, it's been an interesting two years, Warren. And I think to your credit, you have drawn attention to issues that perhaps this council chamber has uh, neglected or ignored for too long. Issues around young people, LGBT issues, and of course, as the leader has referred, the issues facing the community of New Ferry following the explosion in March 2017. On behalf of the Conservative group, Mr Mayor, I would extend our full good wishes to Camp Councillor Warren Ward and his new soon-to-be husband, Steve, as they build their life together. Uh, hopefully they will look back uh, with kindness as to what they think of Willowborough Council. Uh, and can I also say that every cloud has a silver lining, and I believe that I am now back in the top ten of the youngest councillors in the country. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be a comment. Uh, but on behalf of the group, Minister Mayor, can I congratulate Warren for all he has done in the two years. He probably achieved more in two years than some members of in 20, and I wish you very much success for the rest of your life. Councillor Dave Mitchell. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I came across Warren when he was a young man. He was the chair of the Pevenson News Club. And he used to constantly go to the uh, constituency meetings and make sure we knew his points of view in relation to what he wanted to do 
moving forward for young people in, in that particular area. He even appeared here prior to that as uh, in a youth council where he actually spoke really strongly in favour of containing the youth club in Bedington prior to its uh, demise and the hope appearing in Birkenhead. He did change his tune on that one when he became a member of the party full time. I would say there's nobody better to promote politics throughout the world than this young man next to me. I know he's the opposition, but he really has stood out from the first time I met him. Grove Street School, I think it was. Yeah, when I was the mayor as well. So it was, he's done a really excellent job as a ward councillor. Actually, he's done an outstanding job as a ward councillor. And somebody from the opposition saying that really does mean a lot. I do wish him well and his partner well for the future. I'm sure he'll make a success of that as it will be a local councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Mayor, can I move standing order 9, the guillotine that has been taken at 8.30 or after the three debates 111, whichever is the soonest. Is that agreed? Oh, we have to put it to a vote. Sorry. Okay. So, um, you have a seconder? Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Phil Davis. Um, all those in favour? Any against? Abstentions? Clearly carried. Move on to item three, the minutes. Then to item three, the minutes of the annual council meetings held on the 14th and 15th of May 2018 are contained within pages one to eight of the council agenda papers. I will move approval of this set of minutes as a correct record. Do I have a second? Second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Phil Davis. Uh, are there any issues of accuracy in respect of these minutes? In that case, I'll take the vote. All those in favour, please clearly indicate. Any against? Abstentions? Uh, those clearly carried. are signed. Item 4, petitions. Item 4 on the agenda, are there any petitions which councillors wish to present to the council in accordance with Standing Order 21? Councillor Bernie Mooney. I've got a petition for 65 people on Wright Street and asking for residents' parking. Thank you. Councillor Jerry Williams. For 100,000 petitions in relation to traffic issues in the Detroit Thank you. you. Councillor Pat Cleary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a petition signed by 63 residents calling for traffic calming on Elmswood Road in Chamonix. Okay. Councillor Adam Sykes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a petition for 320 residents about repairing the park in Brookhurst, Class Patrol. Councillor Paul Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A petition on behalf of 161 residents against planning application 1.800694, erection of two single storey dwellings to the rear of 240 240B Walser Village. Councillor Jerry Ellis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this one is slightly out of date because of the December release last week. But it's about a petition against coastal car park and also um, parking in our country parks from 436 residents. Thank you. Councillor Julie McManus. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a resident of a uh, petition of over 50 residents to increase um, residents' parking in West Park Gardens and away Beachwood. And Councillor Chris Blakely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I submit this petition on behalf of two groups, Widow Good Dogs and Peaceful Protest Widow Dog Band, who have come together to oppose the Council's proposals to implement a public space protection order. 
Mr Mayor, they and I believe that the proposals ban responsible dog owners from our beaches, open places, and it is a step too far. That and the other draconian measures in the proposals are unpalatable, and we call on the Council to throw these proposals out. Mr Mayor, the petition is signed by 15,033 people. Thank you. Item 5, public questions. We have one public question to be put this evening from Ms Kevin O'Rourke to the leader of the council. Ms O'Rourke, would you like to come forward? Thank you, Mr Mayor, for this opportunity to ask the question. In the report to Cabinet dated 18th December 2017, recommending that the Hoylake Golf Resort project progresses to the next stage, it was stated that the Nicklaus Joint Venture Group have brought together a strong team to deliver the project, bringing considerable knowledge and expertise, and that branded hotel management are a key partner and will lead on the negotiation and management of the Celtic Manic Partnership. Since then, branded, branded hotel management have lost three of their five directors, and the director from the Nicklaus Joint Venture Group has also resigned. The design studies which should have started in February have not yet started. Please would Councillor Phil Davis explain why the programme outlined in December has already slipped by at least four months? And would he confirm whether he still believes that the Nicklaus Joint Venture Group have brought together a strong team? Yeah, Phil Davis. Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor, and thank you to uh, Ms O'Rourke for the question. Uh, the answer is as follows. Um, it's taken the developer longer than anticipated to put his consultancy team in place. But they are now commencing, at their own cost, work on the scoping of the various studies required for the planning process. I still believe, as stated in the Cabinet report, that the Nicholas Joint Venture Group have brought together a strong team to deliver this project. The Council will continue to review its due diligence at every stage of the project to assure itself that the, the developer can deliver the project. Thank you, Mr. May. Ms. O'Rourke, you have a right for a supplementary question. Um, I presume Councillor Davis is aware of the recent BBC Panorama programme, which highlighted the new Chinatown project debacle in which Liverpool City Council were highly criticised for failing to undertake proper due diligence on the developer. <coughs> and also that Carillion were given a clean bill of health just months before they collapsed. Given that the Nicolaus Joint Venture Group has a history of bankruptcy, failed to deliver a promise reward in Planethley, are already several months behind the schedule, and now one of the directors resigned, along with directors of their key partners, please can Councillor Davis explain what does a venture group actually have to do to be considered a weak team in its eyes, and when will alarm bells start ringing? Yeah. But my uh, response to that question, as I mentioned in my main answer, is that the council officers um, will continue to undertake the due diligence that is required in a project like this to make sure that um, the uh, developer is doing everything um, uh, in a, uh, a proper way. And um, uh, but the immediate priority is to let them complete these feasibility studies so that we can come to a view uh, about whether the project when works are you going to Thank you, Mr Mayor. When are you going to start? Thank you. Four months behind now. We now move on to the presentation mentioned earlier from Mr Steve Baker. Executive Head Teacher who has been invited to address the Council in relation to Notice of Motion 6 of the Gender Item Time. Mr Baker. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak to the motion. That will be tabled later. Um, as Mr. Mayor said, I'm the executive head teacher at two special schools in Wirral. Um, both cater for children with challenging behaviour and social and emotional mental health difficulties. The reason why I came into this post was because prior to that I was a war crimes investigator for the United Nations. So I was originally a forensic anthropologist working for the ICTY, the International Criminal Tribunal for Reform in Yugoslavia. Um, and I was tasked with collecting evidence to indict war criminals linked to what was then the Srebrenica, genocide, um, Srebrenica massacre. Um, in 2009, the European Union passed a resolution to recognise it as a genocide, and in 2015, they passed a further resolution to promote 
to nurture peace um, and to promote cultural um, cohesion and societal cohesion. Um, I don't know if you're aware of the genocide and what took place, but basically when the former Yugoslavia splintered following the Declaration of Independence by Slovenia after Tito had died, it was a cultural melting pot, everything was okay. But then people started to self-identify with specific religions. In the East you had Bosnian Croats um, who uh, identified as Catholic Christians, uh, sorry, in the West. In the East you had Bosnian Serbs who identified as Orthodox Christians. And the bulk of Bosnia was made up of Bosniaks or Bosnian Muslims. Now, the war, when that took place, it was, a, um, it was an incredibly dark time for, 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 the, for the entire Balkan area. It was, it, it was absolutely shocking. Srebrenica itself had about 8,000 people living there, um, but it found itself surrounded by Serb territory. Um, President Milosevic um, and, and his, um, the President of the Republic of Serbia decided to create an ethnically clean area and they wanted to do this by completely removing all Bosnians from the area. Um, so Srebrenica found itself in this little enclave surrounded by Serbs. Uh, a French general went in and he said I declare this a safe haven, a safe area. But the UN didn't have any mandate to declare anywhere a safe area. So Boutros Boutros Ghali asked for support from NATO and from Associated Nations. And he asked for 37,000 troops. He got 7,000. Srebrenica got 400 Dutch peacekeepers. The first thing they did is they took the weapons away from the Bosniaks and said, we are here to keep you safe. Uh, and there was an arms embargo on the area. Don't forget, the Serbs had the fourth largest army in Europe at the time. The Bosniaks were then basically um, their supply of weaponry was cut short. The, 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 the anniversary of the genocide is, up, is on the 11th of July each year, so it'll be this Wednesday, it'll be the 23rd anniversary. And um, repeatedly, the Dutch command within Srebrenica asked for support from NATO. They asked for airstrikes to take place on Serb artillery and Serb tanks, and it didn't come. The UN didn't want to risk a public relations disaster just in case any of the United Nations were killed. They asked for support again on the 10th of July. Um, they finally agreed, but the Serbs stopped shelling. So um, again, NATO headquarters, um, Dutch headquarters said, no, we're not going to have any airstrikes. We'll do them in the morning on the 11th of July. Colonel Parons of the Dutch UN, he again requested airstrikes. But he was told that he'd filled in the paperwork on the wrong set of paper. Um, in the end, two F-16 bombers dropped two bombs. The Serbs entered the town and Rapu Mladic, the, um, the, uh, the general in charge of the Serbs who entered the town, said, and he's got on camera saying, it's now is the time to take our revenge on the Muslims. <coughs> so the genocide then took place. About 15,000 people tried to escape through the woods, didn't think that the Dutch UN would keep them safe. They hiked to an area called Tuzla, where I was based, and that was about a three-day hike through mountainous terrain. They were systematically picked off um, and brutally killed. Over half of the people who tried to make that death march didn't survive. In the meantime, the rest of the population of Srebrenica headed towards an, an old abandoned battery factory in Potichari, just outside Srebrenica. The Dutch UN were complicit in separating the men from the boys. They were told there was going to be a troop exchange. They were sent off to their deaths. They were systematically killed. I've personally had tuned the war graves and done autopsies of the bodies who had ligatures on the hands and blindfolds um, around the head so they couldn't see what was happening. They were probably the lucky ones. It's estimated that around 20 to 50,000 women and girls were genocidally raped as part of the conflict to try to deliberately clear that area. Um, so why am I talking to you about this today? Because uh, I'm very grateful to Council Whittingham, who uh, I've been pestering for a number of years, to try and table a motion to commemorate and remember the genocide that took place in Bosnia. After the Second World War, the Holocaust, we were told never again, never again. Yet it happened again on mainland Europe, and I'm afraid to say genocide is taking place around the globe as we speak. Um, as well as my current role running two schools, I do a lot of work for a charity called Remembrance Srebrenica. I sit on their board. I returned to Bosnia a couple of years ago to go meet the, um, the family members of the victims of the genocide. I've met victims of genocide or rape. The stories are too graphic for me to repeat. 
it's absolutely horrendous. I also now work with the Ministry of Justice, so I go into prisons and I talk to prisoners. Uh, last week I was in HMP Thorn Cross, recently I was in HMP Care, and talking about the consequences of unfettered hate crime and why we need to stop making an us and them society. I don't think I need to go on any more about why this is incredibly important, but the people who are far more intelligent than I am, who work for a, a research group called Genocide Watch, said that there are actually 10 steps to genocide. So it starts off with, forgive me because I don't remember, it starts off with classification, symbolization, discrimination, dehumanization, organization. Step six is polarization, preparation, persecution, and then only step nine is extermination. Finally, there's denial. Now, people would argue in the Western world, some, some of the countries um, are already up to step six. And I didn't want to get political and I'll get off my soapbox, but someone's already mentioned the United States of America and building a wall and the rhetoric that comes out about Mexicans being rapists and taking children away from their families. Um, I don't need to remind you about a right-wing terrorist killing Joe Cox and screaming, this is for Britain, repeatedly in 2016. 2016 was the same year when hate crime, reported hate crime in this country went up by 41% and a disproportionate amount is against women. 20 to 50, I'll just let that, I'll, I'll, I'll say that again, let that sink in. 20 to 50,000 women were genocidally raped to try and clear an area. I would urge you to support this motion later because never has it been more important for us to try and create societies with cohesion for us to preach forgiveness and for us, as I, 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 I couldn't have planned this any better, for Riverside Primary to welcome refugees and asylum seekers was absolutely inspirational. I'll leave you with two quotes. Um, one was from Miriam Oster, the Holocaust survivor, who said, education and remembrance are the only cures for hatred and bigotry. I thought it was really touching as well, the prayers to open this meeting talked about inspiring us a common citizenship. And the last thing I'd say before you make the vote later on this evening is, is, is the words of the parliamentarian Edmund Baird who said that all is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. So thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you Mr Baker. So we now move on to item 6, leaders, executive members and chairs reports. Item 6 on pages 9 to 96 of the agenda contains the reports of the executive members and the overview and scrutiny annual report. Cabinet members and scrutiny chairs will not present their reports, which will be taken as read, and the council is invited to receive and note these reports. There will be an allocated maximum 45 minutes for questions to the leader, cabinet members and chairs. These questions must be confined to the contents of the reports and can be asked in any order. Questioners, please ensure that your question is no longer than two minutes. The total number of questions on each report will not usually exceed five. After members' questions, the leader will move the annual report to which there is an amendment. Now, are there any questions which councillors wish to ask in respect of these reports? Councillor Mike Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to ask a question to Jeanette Williams, please, the cabinet member. Please give us a more de please give us more details on the community wealth building strategy you are currently developing with the Director of Finance, please, Jeanette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Williamson. Sorry about that, Mr. Mayor, caught in the words. Thanks for that question, Mike. Uh, community wealth building is a new approach to human generation framed around co cooperative values, self help, participation, social responsibility, and democratic accountability. It's a place based approach that enables, local, <coughs> enables locals to create and retain wealth. Linked to Wirral together, it helps us keep the money within Wirral so that. So that's our anchor institutions to spend within the local supply chain wherever possible. The focus on lowest cost should be shifted to include social outcomes, meaning the public pound can go further. 
Preston Council are a great example of this. Um, we've all been up there recently, Cabinet, um, pays a visit to Preston. Councillor Matthew Brown, who, who pushed this forward, is now leader of Preston Council, and he's going to come and see us too. It's a really, really important strategy that we're working on. Um, it keeps wealth within the community, it stops it being drained by sort of predators. We need to keep the pound here on Wirral and maximise it. So we're currently working alongside CLES, which is Centre for Economic Strategies, to develop our narrative, to coordinate and to, to coordinate and work together with the support of the community life building programme. I will keep you updated as we go along, but we're just making steps at the moment to, to start this strategy. Councillor Chris Blakely. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I have two questions, one to the Leader of the Council and one to the Cabinet Member for Finance and Resources. Questions to the, to the Leader of the Council. What is the projected increase in income from the fines if the public space protection order is made as currently defined? Councillor Blake, it's one question at a time, please. So, Councillor Phil Davis. Uh, I'll supply a Councillor Blake. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Uh, questions to the Cabinet Member for Finance and Resources. Page 60 of the delivery plan states you will deliver a new focus on income generation. As the leader has since ditched the plan to raise £250,000 from coastal parking charges, can the Cabinet Member advise what alternative source of income is being considered? Thank you. Thank you for that question, Councillor Blakely. As it's a very recent announcement that we've just made on that policy, we're going to look into alternatives to fill that gap in the budget. Councillor Chris Carabia. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got two questions, if I may. Um, one at a time. Please. One at a time. First one to you, Councillor George Davis. Um, in your report, it states the local plan must meet local need and be developed on what local people want. Has the council ever commissioned a report on a new build development to ascertain where the new home owners originate from, the results of which would indicate if we're building the correct type of homes for the local residents? The large development of Tor Park in my ward, and specifically Bull Homes developments in Bridal Road, um, have been purchased by very few of the local residents. And considering the proposed Acre Lane development in my ward of 217 homes, with only a handful of affordable houses no social houses, are we doing enough to make sure that we're building the right house types for the local residents? And if so, what evidence are these decisions based on? Councillor George Davis. Thank you so much for the use of it. Um, and thank you, Chris, thanks for your uh, advance notice of it as well in writing. Thank you very much indeed. Um, for affordable housing schemes, we know from the housing register and allocation mm -hmm. system the majority of people who move into new schemes are local people of will. The council has never commissioned a report to ascertain where people in new private developments have moved from as unfortunately there is no requirement for developers to provide this information to the authority. We have, however, where developers have been willing to share information, been able to get this from specific development sites such as in Birkenhead. Keep most homes have been able to advise the council.